theories and statistics. <clears throat> so we have learned about again average, which is quite common to be used. So we again we need to do multiple measurement to obtain data. We are, you should not just be satisfied by single measurement. A single measurement cannot be trusted. Okay, at least three triplicate. That is of the minimum uh, number according to the formula. But if you want to have more trust, trustable data, you have to do more measurement actually. Five, six, seven, ten. And we have discussed about arithmetic mean, then a median, mode, geometric mean, harmonic mean, integrated average when the measured data is continuous, then root sum square RSS, root mean square RMS, which corresponds to more to energy. <clears throat> then standard deviation, measuring the spread of data, this I have mentioned earlier. So when you have only one or two measurement, then you cannot have the spread. So by default, at least you have to do triplicate measurement, three times measurement. But it is also actually not enough yet. If you want more trustworthy data, trustable data, do more measurement. We have discussed about variance, which is the square of standard deviation, CV, coefficient of variation, and standard error of measurement, SEM, then correlation coefficient. Ah, this is not yet. So then after standard error of measurement, <laughs> how do we know that? The two variables are related. So when we measure, when we measure things, yeah, let's say the signal, yeah, when we are measuring two variables, okay, two variables, uh, the ECG and uh, let's say the ECG and other uh, heart-related data, which maybe show whether that person has a certain disease in the heart or not. So to know the relationship yeah, between two variables, X and Y, we use this co uh, correlation coefficient R. This measure the relationship for numerical variables X and Y for per observation. Yeah. If, for example, the Y increases, this you see here that is an ensemble of data yeah, uh, with many data there. When the y value increases with x, then we know that the two have positive correlation. With, but when the y values of the variable decreases with the increasing value of variable x, then we have a negative correlation. However, if there is no trend at all like this, there seems to be no, uh, when the x increases, no, also, not also it. Y increases, but it's just stick on several, some range of values, then we know that it has no correlation. This is from the graph, yeah. Intuitively, we can see from the graph. To uh, determine it mathematically, <coughs> to determine it mathematically, then we do we use this formula R, yeah, the correlation of coefficient R equals to the sigma of xi minus x average multiply to yi minus y average to xi yi here is the pair of data when, when we do measurement and then divided by the square root of xi minus x average square times the square root of yi minus y average square so here when the value of this r calculated from here is positive, is plus one. So we know that we have a positive correlation. When the value is minus one, we have a negative linear relationship. When the value is, is zero, yeah, when the value is zero, means that uh, either of this xi minus x average or yi minus y average is zero, okay, is one, then uh, we know we have no relationship between x and y. Then, when you have experiment, when you are doing an experiment, uh, you have a hypothesis. 
then you need to do hypothesis testing based on the uh, sam uh, sample of data that you have obtained. This is to, to reveal whether the samples give enough evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is basically like uh, here. The number of, okay, this is an example, number of students do not affect the quality of learning. Number of students present similar quality of learning. Now, for example, here, the non-null hypothesis will be the number of students affect the quality of learning. So the null hypothesis is then the opposite of that, that the number of students do not affect the quality of learning or number of students will present similar quality of learning. So when hypothesis testing is obtained, when the samples give enough evidence for us to reject this, for example, yeah, to reject that this null hypothesis, it is called as the hypothesis testing. Later we will get again into that hypothesis testing. So for example, here, this is I already mentioned also when I was uh, explaining about the standard deviation here. Yeah. When we have minus three sigma from the mean, from the x average, and then until the plus three sigma from the x average, basically we have we have ninety five percent degree of confidence that the value of the measurement will have will be contained within that two values, the x average minus three sigma until x average plus three sigma. Okay, but there are still probability that five percent may be located below, as zero uh, two point five percent below the uh, x minus three sigma and two point five percent above the x plus three sigma. This is what we call as ninety five percent confidence of indic uh, of confidence interval, which indicate the degree of confidence percentage that contain the true of true value of a population mean yeah, of a population mean now here you also will hear often when you do measurement and you test your hypothesis in a scientific experiment the p-value test this indicates how often the observed difference would occur by change alone if nothing but change were affecting the outcome yeah so This is when there is no factors influencing the experiment. It's just by change. Then if you have 95% uh, confidence interval, then you know that your p-value should be less than or equal 5%, yeah, 0.045, because it means that the, the, the outlier, yeah, the outlier of your data will be located in x average minus three sigma in this, in this region, or x average or mu here plus three sigma so uh, beyond that in above that above this value yeah, this is x, x average plus three sigma yeah so this the values of the measurement below that yeah, so in this white region are the uh, occurrence yeah that appears only by chance and we call it outlier so not really related to the hypothesis or the experiment we are doing so when the p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.05 then we have 95 percent confidence so if the data is less than 0 0.05 or less than five percent yeah, the the, the p-value that it's only happens by chance then the results are significant the null hypothesis is rejected so for example if we have the our our real hypothesis is that number of students affect the quality of learning so then the the outlier will be the number of students the opposite of that the number of students do not affect the quality of learning this will be the null hypothesis the zero hypothesis null is zero right so when the value of this that of that that the the uh, number of students do not affect the quality of learning in this case yeah is somehow very small somehow very small 
less than 5% of the whole population mean, then means that the results, the hypothesis, the actual hypothesis is that the, the which is the number of students affect the quality of learning is within this 95%. It means that the null hypothesis here, the opposite of the hypothesis is rejected. That is the number of students affected the quality of learning. Okay. So when you have a hypothesis, for example, let's give another example. Um, uh, let's say in, related to by materials. Yeah, uh, the uh, say so you you are using for example electro spinning to develop the material uh, the, the fiber using uh, let's say uh, using the PM. Uh, you are, you are trying to make PMMA, PMA, polymethyl acrylamide, Ezra, what is in your PKM project? PLA, sir. PLA, yeah. polylactic acid. Polylactic acid. For example, you use electro spinning. The voltage, the high voltage, your hypothesis will be the high voltage, uh, the voltage value of the electro spinning machine will affect the thickness of the fiber from the PLA. Yeah, that will be your hypothesis. The null hypothesis you will, uh, will you will be making is the opposite of that. So that the voltage value does not affect the, the voltage value that uh, does not affect the thickness of the PLA fiber obtained from electro spinning. So when later when you do the measurement, when you do the the, the varying the voltage, okay, varying the voltage, and then at high uh, and then measuring the thickness, measuring the thickness. After that, you obtain that the number of fibers, yeah, size that are not related to the voltage of the electro spinning is uh, below five percent of the whole population of the fiber that you measure. So then, it means your null hypothesis is rejected. It means your actual hypothesis is proven. That is the voltage value uh, affect the thickness of the PLA fiber made using electro spinning technique. Yeah, so this is how we do it. So it means if it is less than 5%, it means you have 95% confidence that the voltage will affect the thickness of the fiber used, uh, made using electro spinning. Okay, when you do measurement, you will often make mistakes or normal random, which is a normal random variation. X zero is the true center value, okay? When delta X is approaching to zero. So when the error delta X here is approaching to uh, zero, the value of the measurement output will approach to the input value here. So here input value represents the uh, the actual value. So when you are doing measurement like this, okay, you first in, when you do calibration, when you do calibration, uh, you have a certain standard, right? For example, let's go to, back to the example of the balance. You have the the weight balance, uh, uh, for example, one hundred gram or let's say zero point one kilogram. You have another one, uh, 0 0.2 kilogram. You have 0 0.5 kilogram, then one kilogram and two kilogram. So when you measure here, okay, then you have, for example, this is the the, the value of the reading and yeah, the value of the reading that when it is uh, 0 0.1, it should be, uh, let's say. You, you get a reading of 0 0.11, for example. Yeah, this is the value here is 0 0.1. So this is 0 0.2. This is calibration. Yeah, this is the, the actual mass, or in this case, it will be x, xi. And this is the reading coming out from your sensor or from the instrument. Let's say this is xo 0 0.2, and this is will be 0 0.5. Then this is one kilogram, and this is two kilogram. So in reality, it's very, for example, due to the sum, you cannot get 
accurate measurement. This will be, for example, 0. Point, let's say 205. Then this is 0. 0.5 will be 0. 0.4 uh, or 5. 1 kg will be, uh, let's say this becomes let's say 0. 0.95, etc. So then you draw. 0 is 0, then you draw this. Okay, this becomes your calibration curve. Okay, this becomes your calibration curve. So later you have an unknown. You have an unknown, uh, let's see, change the unknown, um, unknown mass you put into that balance. So it indicates the balance indicate this value. Let's say this value indicate uh, 0 0.5. So when we put that into the calibration chart, in the calibration curve, and since here now the 0 0.5 is connected to 0 0.45, while 0 0.5 here will be, if you draw this, and then you will have value, for example, like this for the sake of discussion, you have a value of 0 0.55 instead of 0 0.5. Okay, the 0 0.5 is the actual mass of that object, yeah, for example, but your measurement using the calibration curve of using your balance indicate that that mass has 0 0.55 kilogram. Okay, then this becomes the mistakes or we call it error. Yeah, so the error will be 0 0.55 minus 0 0.5 divided by the actual value 0 0.5. So this is times 100%, okay? So this is becomes 0 0.05, you point it value, 0 0.5 or equals to 10% error, okay? So this is the error. So when somehow you, you can have a very accurate calibration and then uh, 0 0.5 here approaches 0 0.5, when you put the unknown object, unknown, the object with the unknown weight into the balance, you will then obtain 0 0.5. In that case, then your measurement value, the X output, will be very close to the input value Xi. So the 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 will approach to zero. So then your error is 0%. Okay. So how to reduce the error? the measurement, how to reduce the error of the measurement. One way is to make the measurement many times. Yeah, so when you do only the measurement one time, your measurement may be affected by, for example, environment, or by yourself as the operator, your hand may be tremble. Then maybe the balance itself will be shaking due to, for example, if it is located next to a very busy road, the vibration from the cars, from from the whatever yeah, in, in the car will affect the balance, especially when your balance is very sensitive, then it will create error. To reduce this kind of error, random errors due to the external vibration, external environment things, things what you can do is measure many times, as many as possible. Yeah, you, at least three, three if even three is very minimum, it just to be able to fit into the standard deviation uh, formula. But then, if possible, measure more than three, five times, ten times even. After that, then average the results. Okay. If possible, also make the measurement several times using different measurements. So that you will have. Sometimes one, one, one instrument is uh, not really calibrated or maybe calibrated but not too often. So then the other instrument is freshly calibrated or very new, then uh, if you use this different measurement, then you can have an average of which then you have, you can better approach the true value of uh, that measurement. Making the successive measurement on different parts of uh, the scale, yeah? on this different part of the scale, you do the measurement also to reduce the error. Okay, then, <clears throat> the accuracy is freedom from error, the, the degree of conformity between the measurement and the standard. So 
in the case of the previous example, the accuracy will be uh, the opposite of the error. Yeah, the opposite of the error. So if in the previous example, I saw an example when the error is 10%, it means the accuracy is 90%. Okay, it's 90%. So you can call it like one minus the error yeah, uh, times 100%. Okay. So accuracy is freedom from error. Degree of conformity between the measure run and the standard or any other validation method. Yeah, that is why when you are developing a sensor, yeah, you are, you are developing a sensor or developing a new instrument. How can you indicate the accuracy of your new sensor or your new instrument? You have to validate your sensor or your instrument. How to validate it? You have a certain standard or certain unknown value. You measure it in both instruments. In your new sensor or new instrument, you also measure it in the standard method or standard instrumentation. Let's say, for example, you are developing a glucose biosensor, a biosensor that can measure the level of glucose in the blood. Then you sample the blood, for example. You do you already do calibration chart. How do you do calibration charts? By, for example, putting a standard concentration of glucose inside a buffer that represents the blood liquid, okay, the blood plasma. Then after you calibration the chart, then you have an unknown uh, unknown uh, sample. Let's say you take sample from your own body or from a, a volunteer body. Then you do the measurement using your sensor, and then you put into your calibration chart, you have the number of the of that unknown, yeah, the number of the, the concentration of the glucose of that unknown <coughs> uh, uh, unknown sample, but how do you know that that unknown sample really has that concentration? Let's say X concentration, X mol or X milligram per milliliter of glucose in that uh, sample. How do you know for sure? But to know for sure, you know, in order to know the error, in order that we know the accuracy, we validate that. We validate the measurement by measuring the same sample in a different instrument which is more standard. For example, uh, another glucometer, yeah. which is being uh, calibrated in the factory, or using a different method, let's say, for example, blood analyzer, or using spectrophotometer, or different other methods, which we know has been uh, cali uh, calibrated to a better standard. So from there, we know then the accuracy of our newly developed sensor. Okay. So here, this is the accuracy, where we have the uh, the actual. This is the actual value of that particular sample that we call the reference value or the standard. Okay. Uh, then we have the measured value here XO. Yeah, the closer the XO value, the mean, as say, the mean of the measure, because we measure multiple times and like like not only single time. So this the middle part represents the mean or the average of the population measurement, a uh, measurement population. And here, this represents the spread of the measurement population. Yeah, as we mentioned, ninety-five percent of the measurement lies between my uh, the XO average minus three sigma until XO average plus three sigma. Okay, this accuracy is delta X. And uh, the precision itself is indicated by the spread. The closer the spread, uh, the, the, the narrower the spread, it means the sigma is narrower. The spread of the, like, uh, the standard deviation is smaller. It means the higher the precision of the measurement. The accuracy itself is shown whether that mean of the, uh, of the measurement average close or not to the True value. True value here is represented by reference value. So I mean reference standard. Otherwise, if you don't have a reference standard, if it is an unknown, uh, unknown sample, then you have the reference value by measuring that unknown sample using a reference method, a validate for what, what what we call it usually as validation. Yeah, as I have mentioned earlier. So for example, you do you are developing a glucose blood sensor, a new glucose blood sensor. 
the measurement by your new glucose processor is indicated by this to get the reference value here either you have a sample from a factory which they already calibrated the glucose level to be such and such x time otherwise you obtain an unknown sample from subject or your own you measure that unknown uh, subject uh, unknown sample using a standard method other equipment which is more calibrated or already calibrated with the better standard yeah with that then you do validation like that so when it is close this average of the measurement value using your method is close to this reference value to the true value in this case it becomes the true value then the accuracy is higher okay the closer the the closer the the, 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 the xo average here with the xi means the more accurate your instrument is. the closer means the delta x is smaller the delta x represents the error here right the error the delta x here represents the error the smaller the error the higher the accuracy so precision is the exactness of successive measurement, the degree of refinement of the measurement. It means by, yeah, you know precision only by measuring multiple times. So that is also why when you do calibration, as I have explained earlier, yeah, you do calibration using a known standard or known reference values, yeah, zero, something like this. And then you draw the, this is the, the scale, uh, the scale in, your sensor, the reading, yeah, the read scale or reading in your sensor or your instrument, you cannot do multi only a single measurement. You, even with the non the standard, you have to do multiple times, such that then you can draw the standard standard deviation. This is the will be the average, then plus minus this three sigma. Yeah, the standard deviation here also like this. Yeah, if the reference value itself is shown using vertical bar, yeah, in Excel, Excel you can you can do it. So it means if you use vertical bar, the measurement of this standard, yeah, this is the value value one, value two, value three, etc., is done multiple times. So from that multiple times, each of the value of the standard, then you do averaging. You you take the average, the mean. You also calculate the standard deviation. Sigma or S. Yeah, from there, this is calculated from the average minus three sigma plus three sigma. Then you can draw the vertical bar. If the value of the reference itself is not fixed, yeah. For example, we I mentioned earlier 0 0.1 kilogram, but the reference standard itself also indicated by a spread, yeah, 0 0.1 kilogram plus minus. Uh, let's say uh, 0 0.001 kilogram, yeah? 0 0.001 kilogram, one milligram, right? So then it means the value of year should also be indicated by horizontal bar, uh, like this. So not only vertical bar, but horizontal bar. So if you if you read some of papers or journal papers, yeah, you may occasionally find a graph like this okay a graph like this but normally without the sometimes without the horizontal bar just vertical bar because the horizontal because the the, the standard value in the x is considered already to be fixed yeah but if they do not if they are also in range they have some ranges for example the mass itself because it is not the the highest standard, not the international standard, but maybe a national standard or lower level standard, then usually it has also reach. Yeah, because it is calibrated when doing the, the calibration with the higher standard, it has also a range of results. Then we draw it also with a horizontal bar. Okay, so if you try to have a look or a read or some papers, sometimes they have this kind of uh, graph. Okay, so you are not shocked anymore. Why? What is the meaning of that uh, cross graph yeah, or a vertical bar graph, etc. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. Then here the factors in making measurement. So this is the illustration yeah, between precision and accuracy. So again, do not be confused with the term precision and accuracy. These two are different. Sensitivity is another different terms. 
over here. Yeah, this is the this is illustrated using uh, archery, yeah, archery case. So when you are shooting the the target, yeah, like this, your shooting spread all around the target, uh, and and then even quite far away from the highest mark, yeah, the ten mark, yeah, the inner most red circle. So then it means you have low accuracy and no precision. But for example, if you shoot the target and most of your shooting, let's say how many shooting here, uh, six shooting, almost all converge into one single region within the target like this, but still, but far away from the highest mark 10. So it means you have high precision because each of your shooting uh, varies along the, a little bit from the previous one. And the first shooting, second shooting, third shooting, and the sixth shooting all more, more or less have the same value, have the same value. So it means you have high precision. But since your shooting is far from the, 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 the highest mark target here in the middle, which is the true value representing the true value of that uh, mesh run, yeah, then it means you have low accuracy. This mean here, it means here. Your delta x, the xi, different, the difference between your xo, which is your shooting target, your shooting uh, region, yeah, position within the target, and the actual true value xi, which is here represented by this the middle part, the bull's eye, yeah, is very far. So it means you have a lot of error. Your accuracy is low. Alternatively, you can have an average. Which more or less will converge at the middle. Yeah, that it means you have high accuracy, but however, you have spread of shooting result. Yeah, sometimes it is in the middle in the red circle, but sometimes a little bit in the second white circle. So in this in this case, you are told you are uh, you are called to have low precision. You have high accuracy because the average of your shooting in this case or your measurement. Converge yeah, near the true value of the reference, in this case represented by the middle mark here. However, your shooting is low precision because your first and second may vary a little bit far from each other. Then the perfect one, of course, which all which we all want for measurement is when we do measurement multiple times, and the variation between measurement one measurement two to until nth measurement is very small. The spread is very small. In this case, we have a very high precision. The spread is very small. Yeah? The standard deviation is very small. The sigma is very small. We have high precision. The average of our measurement, x over here, the average is also very close to the xi. Yeah? The delta x is very small. Yeah? So that then it means we have high accuracy. OK, any questions regarding the difference between accuracy and precision. No questions. Because this no, is sir. this will come out during it's your clear. oral final exam. Okay, sir. Usually, usually it will come out. Your uh, batch is the last one to have oral final exam. Uh, your junior, the batch twenty twenty, yes. Have any more on an exam? Okay. Now there are also other factors in making measurement. The first is what we call as validity. How well uh, the instrument measure what it purports to measure. This is what we call validity. So this is what I call how to check the validity. We have to do it using validation. How to validate? Usually, we compare the measurement result of our instrument with a more standard. Instrument, another standard instrument. Reliability. This is the statement of its consistency of the instrument or the sensor when deserving the values of the mesh run on different trials, when the mesh run may take on very different value, how consistent it is. The reliability. So on different trials, so when we do one measurement and then after Afterwards, maybe after a while, 
we do another measurement. If the measurement value remain the same or similar, then we call that instrument to be reliable. But if it varies, yeah, then a lot, then it is not reliable. Repeatability, this is the ability of the instrument to return the same value when repeatedly exposed to the exact same stimulant. So, yeah, this is almost similar to precision. Uh, different, yeah. precision is when uh, it's still the same, the same, the same, the same measurement uh, occasion, the same stimulant. Then you do multiple time measurement, you have the uh, precision. Repeatability is you put the same stimulant, it may not be the same time, then you do again, same stimulant, the same amount. It, when the same value is repeated consistently, this is repeatability. Reproduce is similar to repeatability is reproducibility. In reproducibility, the ability of an experiment or study to be accurately reproduced or replicated. So in reproducibility, the experiment itself does not have to be done by the same person. It may, how replicable it means that of instrument means that when the instrument, uh, when the experiment or instrumentation instrument is, is used by other people, it and with the same stimulant, it should give the same value, uh, the same value of measurement yeah, or the same result. This is reproducibility. Yeah, that's why you call a scientific in the scientific finding has to be reproducible. Usually. What does it mean? So when you report a finding in a journal paper, etc., when other people repeat your measurement, reproduce, not we, call it, we don't call it repeat, but reproduce your experiment using the same method, using the same material, they should get the same result when that experiment is reproducible. When it is not when that experiment cannot have been reproduced with the same value, uh, with the same value, the same result, it means that that experiment is not reproducible. So, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, you understand the difference now: repeatability and reproducibility. Repeatability is when usually it is done by the same person using the exact same stimulant. How will the instrument give the value? Will it still be the same or not? If it's still the same, we call it repeatable measurement. Yeah, reproducibility when another person come try to do the same measurement. Can it be reproduced the same result using the same exact stimulant using the same instrument but with different person? This is called reproducibility. Resolution. This is the ability to distinguish the quantity measured with certainty. So what is it? So resolution. Uh, when we have a calibration again, again, yeah, when we have, uh, where should I draw? When should I draw? Uh, no, no space. Okay, it's on the right side. When, uh, when we have a measurement like this, yeah. I mentioned, for example, again, the, the example of balance yeah, with its weight standard 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, let's say one kilogram. Okay, then we, like this, right? Draw, what should we not forget is we should also, later when you do calibration, you should also measure the value at the scale here or the reading at zero kilogram, okay, at zero kilogram. So like this, okay, at multiple times also. So you also have the measurement, the calibration measurement at zero or what we call it background measurement. Because, because, okay. and also measure also triplicate time at least or multiple more than triplicate if it is necessary, if, it, if you want a better uh, precision, yeah. So you obtain here, what we call as the measurement of the background. You also have the average, the mean, 
yeah, it could be zero, the mean, but also sometimes could also have offset. Later we will learn what offset is. Then we have the standard deviation, sigma. That's why indicated by a vertical bar. So a solution here, yeah, is obtained from this three sigma here, the three sigma at the background measurement. But it's not yet, not only three sigma, based on this calibration chart, you will obtain, for example, y equal mx plus d, right? If there is no offset, then b will be equal to zero. So y equals to mx. Then, uh, after you obtain three sigma, you will put this three sigma as your y equal to y equal to mx plus b. The x value for this three sigma at the background, at the background means at the zero value of the standard. This x value is the resolution. Okay, understand? Resolution is usually used in mechanical domain sensor. So it indicates, yeah, what does it mean? What does it indicate? It indicates uh, how small yeah, the delta x here that you are you know for sure it is not uh, so it means what sorry when the sigma is very small when the sigma is very small very small in the background it means you have the x is small it means the resolution is high so this is opposite resolution is high when the three sigma is small yeah. Uh, you know for uh, for sure that when how small of a delta x here of the small change in the the, the 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 weight that you can measure that has readable that has a measurable reading. Okay, I hope I can explain it clearly in my English. Yeah. Measurable reading and that certainty is indicated by this three sigma at the zero background level after that the three sigma is put into this equation if it of the calibration uh, line yeah? if it is linear then you just put the three sigma as the value of y and you, then you will obtain the x the x is the resolution okay so many people make mix up or confuse resolution later with sensitivity later we will observe sensitivity resolution in the case of Biosensor or chemical sensor is often uh, named as LOD, limit of detection. Okay, this is the term of resolution used in the chemical sensor or biosensor world. In mechanical sensor, the name is resolution, but in uh, biosensor or biochemical sensor or chemical sensor, it's called limit of detection. Limit of detection means how small that the sensor can measure how small of the measurement that the, the measure can detect with certainty, with 95% certainty. We can call it like that. Okay. Any questions so far with resolution? Yeah, I hope it's clear enough. Yeah, later, later you will have more, more, more. Example, of course, and comparing this with sensitivity. Okay. Error. Yeah, we have discussed about error earlier, but how can we express it? I have actually given the example where we can express the error in terms of percentage. Okay. We can express the error as absolute error, x plus minus y unit. Yeah, for example, uh, the, 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 the weight standard, 0.1 kilogram plus minus, I've given the example also, 0 0.001 kilogram, for example. Relative error, we can also express it in terms of percentage. So for example, if it is 0 0.01 kilogram and the error is 0 0.001 kilogram, it means that the percentage error is 1%, right? So we can express that weight standard as 0 0.1 kilogram plus minus 1%. So, then categories of error, it could be come from theoretical error. So from the measurement theory that predicts how value will behave when a certain measurement procedure is applied. So
So theoretical error is calculated based on the uh, theoretical model or the formula. For example, when we calculate blood pressure, okay, when we calculate blood pressure, uh, the pressure, yeah, we we do we do averaging because it is continuous. Uh, then average of one over t the period, integral t over t dt, and then the pressure is simplified as diastolic plus systolic minus diastolic divided by three. Of course, this is easy calculation. Yeah, this made the actual one should be using this. However, for simplicity, since we only measure systolic and diastolic, if we use non-invasive measurement, uh, then the disadvantage will be we have more error. Yeah, because this is now simplified into this uh, formula. Of course, it is easier to calculate the average blood pressure, but it is not from theory, it is not the same as this, which is calculated from the integral. Okay. We can also have static error, a number of subclasses that are all related because they are always present. And this static error is not a function of type of frequency. For example, due to the misreading of the output, yeah, we call this reading static error. When you do, you use, uh, for example, measuring glass, like this, measuring volume, you, you should not have an angle of reading with our eye to the reading scale. If you have an angle, we call it parallax reading error. Uh, we can have also uh, like this, yeah, also similar when you are measuring with like this, you have to really look here when the shadow yeah, is not in parallel or in line with the needle, you know that you have parallax error. Okay. You have also interpolation error when the needle is in between two scales. What will be then the value? This is called as interpolation. If your measurement reading is in digital, then you will have the last digit bubble error. Usually when you use digital balance like this, the last digit sometimes is bubbling, so changing values yeah, rapidly because it's very sensitive. Static error can also be due to environmental static error affected, for example, by temperature, humidity, pressure, etc. Or the characteristic of the instrument itself, such as the zero offset error, the gain error, yeah? and all of these are called as characteristic static error. Errors can also be dynamic when it arises when the measurement is changing or in motion. Yeah? For example, when you are Measuring inertia and your body of your body when your body is moving, this is dynamic error. Instrument insertion error when measurement process alter the phenomenon being measured. When you put pressure sensor inside, for example, you, when you measure blood pressure using invasive measurement instrument method, you put the catheter inside. This will actually alter alter the pressure itself already. Yeah. Uh, then that is why the cha challenge is how to make the influence of the measurement process itself as small as possible to the actual value of the measurement that we are measuring. Minimize this error by good instrument design and good practices, good practice, not only by instrument design, by, but the measurement protocol itself needs to be correct. So when we develop an instrument or a sensor, usually we develop first the prototype, we do some testing after that, the final instrument design. If it were in Indonesia, we do approval from the Directorate General of uh, Pharmaceutic, Pharmaceutical and Biomedical Devices, Division yeah. Alat Pharmacy dan Alat Kesehatan. Only after approval and we have this easy error, then we can do the production. Okay, that will be all I think for